Hello, everyone. I'd like to start off the event by welcoming you to Integra's hands-on online guest exploratory data analysis webinar. Please notice our legal disclosure. Material and concepts that are shared here are current and future product features and are for the event participants only. Sharing and copying them requires Integra's permission. I am Hodar Zai, and today I have Babak Shafi, Integra's founder and CEO, which will give you an overview of Integra and Digital Hub, and Sylvia Lee for a live data exploration session with me. As part of this series, we will have another upcoming uh, webinar next week on December 1st, which we will be showcasing visualization capabilities of Digital Hub. Stay tuned for future webinars and other features of the platform like machine learning and big data, which will take place in the new year and we will announce the dates. We encourage you to join our online data science community for announcements regarding the platform release and also the webinars. Also, the community is a place where you can meet other data scientists and engineers, collaborate with them, and learn and grow your knowledge with the community. Now, let's hear from Bobak for uh, the overview of Integra and Digital Hub. To you, Bobak. Thank you, Ada, and good morning, uh, everyone. And uh, see some really familiar and old names uh, from many years ago that has joined. So thanks, everyone, for accepting my invitation on LinkedIn. Um, for those of you who don't know me or Integra, I'll give you a quick uh, background. I've been in this space of data and analysis for a long time. And uh, over the last uh, 10 years, focused in uh, oil and gas uh, area, and especially last five years, focusing on AI and ML. And we established Integra because we believe there is lots of value to be gained from the data that exists in uh, from operations in oil and gas. And we love solving tough engineering problems. So at Integra, we have engineers, data scientists, and you know our project managers working together to solve some of these problems. Uh, the first few years of Integra, we focus on use cases in, in energy management, on pipeline integrity, on uh, well optimization, SAC D optimization, water optimization. And over the last few months, due to the slowness of everything that has been going on, we have been focusing on bringing some of our tools and capabilities to the public so everyone can innovate. Uh, we believe in open source and their ability to uh, uh, push the industry forward, but we also recognize that oil and gas industry is far away from adopting open source. So what we have done, we have created a platform that brings all the open source innovation into one place, uh, but it keeps it secure, it's uh, scalable, so it has all the enterprise capabilities that are required for adoption. So combining open source innovation and enterprise great capabilities is what uh, Digital Hub um, offers. Uh, we're also starting to share our know-how in the community. You know, our mission was always to have um, you know, high impact in oil and gas. And we realized that we need more people uh, doing what we do in order to really have that impact. So we are starting to share our notebooks, our procedures, our know-how on the community, which I encourage everyone to, to join. Uh, it's brand new, uh, uh, it's been launched two weeks ago, uh, but there's already quite a uh, bit of good content. The idea here is that we need to convince, you know, anyone who's joined here probably has some interest in AI and ML or in data or analytics. Uh, we are the converter, but there is a bigger crowd outside of here that still doesn't believe we can use AI and ML, still doesn't believe, you know, there could be problems solved with the use cases, especially in oil and gas. So what we need to do, we all need to work together to bring these messages, you know, to the executives, to the senior leaders, and help them understand the, all the potential that exists today uh, around solving some of these uh, problems. And some of them with really, you know, simple uh, techniques. Uh, so that's why we have the community and that's why we're doing these webinars. And I really hope that you take integral messages and your own messages and, you know, push that around and push it forward and make sure that everybody understand that it is possible. AIML is here to stay. If uh, people are still non non-believers, we have many use cases to demonstrate how we solve uh, pump predictive failures, pipeline failures, water optimization, um, energy management, uh, flow optimization in pipelines using uh, machine learning, AI, and data science. Uh, next slide, please. So Digital Hub is a platform for you. It's for everyone. 
you know, primarily we're focusing on individuals who are uh, looking to become, or they are, you know, um, um, data scientists. Uh, it's cloud native, meaning that all the tools that you need will be available on the cloud. It's very cost effective, so we leverage on the mat uh, capabilities of uh, Kubernetes to just run the systems when you need it. And this way we can bring the cost significantly low um, uh, to use. Um, also scalability is another big phenomenon of this scale. So if you have, for example, basic data exploration, you could be on an, a, a sort of cluster. And then if you need to suddenly expand and do you know, a neural network training or a simulation, um, it can automatically scale to hundreds of CPUs, uh, depending on the plan and where you are in the customization uh, to enable that workload for a certain period of time, and then it will shut down. So again, very cost effective. Uh, these capabilities uh, are you know, hard to come by. They exist in other platforms, but at the same time, they're very necessary for real work on, in, on, on data science. Uh, next, next slide, please. So who can use uh, the platform? You know, three groups that we had in mind, because this is kind of who we are here at Integra. And initially we built it for ourselves. So now we are expanding that to outside world as engineers. So you know, our engineers wanted to use uh, the latest innovation in open source to uh, look at the data. So the reservoir engineers, you know, the production engineers, the reliability engineers, they have the data, uh, they have some tools today to look at the data, but really it is a struggle when you have large volumes of data and with a lot of variety in the data. So this tool enables those data engineers to quickly explore and have good understanding of the data. Also data scientists, you know what we learned? A lot of people are either transitioning to a data science uh, educational program or they want to become a data scientist. And you know the surveys show, the latest survey from Anaconda uh, that shows that 40% of the data scientists' work is around managing the packages. It's all open source, like managing dependencies, managing packages, installing components. With a push of button in Digital Hub, you can have the environment up and running. We'll actually do it today. You'll see in a matter of uh, minutes, you'll have an entire big data platform up and running uh, in the cloud, and we'll actually solve the problem uh, today. Developers are another group of people who are looking for bringing intelligent functions into their applications, and we're targeting those as well with this uh, platform. Uh, next slide, please. So features, what, what did we think about Digital Hub? You know, what should Digital Hub be? So yeah, yes, anybody can install, download, get Kubernetes, good. like these are all open source tools, but it does take time. We did it, and it did take time and every time that we had a project, we would have to go and redo it. Uh, so we are now giving a convenient way for everyone to um, access it. It's all in the cloud. All you need is a browser. With the browser, you can log in. You'll have access to data science, machine learning, data exploration, and all the latest and greatest packages that we have used. And specifically uh, for oil and gas, we've augmented it for oil and gas. Plus, you know, anything that will be in the future is a, is a, is a breeze to, to add to the environment. A scaling is another component. So another skill gap in the data scientist is ability to kind of do DevOps, right? With Kubernetes and Docker. Uh, we've also built those capabilities right into the platform and we can scale it on, on demand. Teamwork is another component. We realize that given that this is space of data science, uh, especially in oil and gas, and I'm sure it's the same in other industries, requires business process knowledge, operation knowledge, and data science. This is always a teamwork. So we enable teamwork inside Digital Hub, so a data scientist can be working on a specific, you know, data set, doing the data wrangling, doing the data vision, and then a business analyst could be looking at dashboards. We have dashboarding tools, BI tools, monitoring tools, alerting tools, um, machine learning tools, all embedded into a single uh, platform. Big data is part of uh, the platform. Uh, so leveraging big data environments is, is fairly straightforward. You know, as, as some of you, if you have tried um, in, incorporating a spark into the environment, it is a technical uh, challenge, you know, it's doable, but now spark comes out of the box. So out of the box, you have a spark. Very similar to what you see, say, on a data breaks, you know, it's the same, same concept. So we use the spark, it's already embedded, and you can leverage a spark for uh, big data as well as a central database. So the central database concept is that for each project, we're providing a central secure database, and this database manages interaction between different and integration between applications. So all the applications that we have on Digital Hub 
for a specific user run on a specific database. And every user will get their own database and every project gets its own database. So every time that you create a project, you're creating a set of, you know, uh, Kubernetes and, you know, uh, databases and applications all at the same time. Uh, next slide. What enables Digital Hub is three core components. So we've automated the DevOps, uh, Kubernetes, and Docker, so we can quickly add packages. We can quickly add new um, applications. And fairly quickly, when the new innovation comes in the market, we see, okay, well, there is a relevance between what that feature does and what we need to do, say, in oil and gas or any other industry you might be in, it can be added fairly uh, fairly quickly. The data store is all managed by uh, PostgreSQL and persistent volume control. So these components allow us to bring everybody together, uh, connect, you know, becomes the glue at the data foundation level between all the applications. And our data science pack includes notebooks, uh, pre-configured notebooks, procedural pre uh, notebooks, and apps for visualization, uh, which we will show in future uh, demos. Uh, next slide. We're quite excited. We have a set of pricing, early pricing to, you know, reward people who are uh, going to join us uh, air, on earlier stages of Digital Hub. And the idea here is that we are developing this for everyone. Our end goal is to innovate and bring these innovations to oil and gas. Uh, if you're taking any courses, if you're a student, it's free. You can use it for 40 hours. If you're an individual, for $15, you could have access to 160 hours of the platform with all the features and the community. And as a team, you can add team members to work with you and you have more time and more, more hours. More details are on the website. I just wanted to put it out there. That is, uh, um, that is the entire platform is available at very, very low fees at this stage of early pricing. Next slide. So with that, I'm going to pass it to uh, Sylvia, who is going to uh, look at the rock type classification. And, you know, historically this has been done, uh, but it takes time and it's time consuming. And we're using, you know, uh, machine learning and classification to identify the rock types uh, as we go. So uh, to you, Sylvia. Hi everyone, uh, thank you for back uh, and thank you everyone for joining, good morning. Uh, so today I'm going to be showing you uh, just quickly on a classification problem that we have, um, a very simple use case in terms of drilling optimization and um, on the specifically on the problem of rock type classifications. So in terms of uh, this is a very important problem because when we're drilling knowing what formations that you're dealing with uh, in your reservoir, it can bring you a lot of insight, such as what are the amount of hydrocarbons uh, in your, just an estimation of that in your reservoir, or even predicting uh, in neighboring reservoir, how does that look? Uh, so on the other hand, uh, you can also do some better risk management and also well optimization when you know what formations you're dealing with. So in today's demo, we're going to go through uh, the entire process from end to end. So from data profiling uh, all the way to data preparations and rock type classifications. So in terms of like what to do in uh, when you're data profiling, so when you're exploring your data, how to look into each variable analysis to make sure things are uh, going correctly. And also in terms of your data preparation, once you have seen some problems with your data, so how do you deal with some missing values? Uh, how do you deal with outliers? And then finally, our final, very last aim of um, this classification uh, is to do a non-supervised machine learning, so a k-means clustering um, tool on it. So first now, let me uh, go into um, the digital hub. So first, when we come into our digital hub, uh, the first thing the first thing you will see is a login page on here. So when we log in, uh, we will see a home page on here. So if you have joined us uh, last time for our demo, you will see that there is some changes to our home page now. Now I'm able to see um, the projects that I have created myself and also projects that others have shared with me. Uh, 
So just very quickly, uh, in case you worked with us for the last demo, uh, I'll just show you quickly how we are able to uh, create a project very quickly, just as Babak has uh, mentioned. So we'll just choose our different project types, uh, the components that we want, add in the members um, that we want it to be in our project. So let's say I'm adding one of our team members. Let's say owner. And then we just give this a very nice name. Oh, rock type. Specification. Um, like that. A nice description. And also maybe give it some text. So I'm going to be using page names. So I'm just going to generate that. So now that our process is building, as Bobak have mentioned, this is on the cloud. Uh, so it will take a while to generate our project uh, as a provision everything on the cloud. But what I'm going to do quickly is to go into the Jupyter Hub. Uh, so now that we're going to start up our server notebook, uh, and then I'll show you uh, going through the demo. So for today's demo, we're going to specifically very focus on Jupyter Lab here. Um, the other components, Grafana and Superset, this are visualization tool that we will go into more in depth in future sections, so stay in tune. Uh, so for today's demo, uh, we're going to open up a template notebook on here for um, the problems that we're going to be looking into. So by this being a template notebook, what that means for you is that once you have subscribed to us on Jupyter Hub, you will be able to see this right away um, inside uh, your Jupyter Hub. Uh, we will also be sharing this notebook and this data set uh, in the uh, chat uh, inside uh, the meeting here and also inside our community forum. So if you want to take a more detailed look or play around, feel free to go into those links and look through it. So specifically for this notebook today, we're going to be using Python and some of the common packages that you're going to be see used through the notebooks are NumPy, Pandas, Scikit-Learn. These are common data science packages. Um, Scikit-Learn specifically for machine learning, Mapolib and Seaborn are for visualization. Um, the one that I want to highlight to you though is a Pandas profiling. Uh, this is a very interesting package that with just a few lines of code, you'll be able to get a very comprehensive analysis of your variables. So again, a problem um, specifically, we're going to be looking at well log data uh, and looking specifically at the essential man, uh, measurements that might be collected by your logging tool or your sensor tool. Uh, the final aim is of course, to do this rock type analysis. So we've um, put a lot more details on here that you can come in and look at. So first off, I'm going to load my data, load my packages. I'm just going to run the Pandas profiling quickly because that takes a little while to generate. Um, so looking at just like the, the first few rows of my data sets here, um, I see that I'm looking at some variables like the gamma ray, um, the shell volume, some resistivity, sonic, porosity, and also um, the density. So with uh, the what we'll see from the Pandas profiling is that it's going to generate specifically um, for every single for every single columns on here, uh, so what are the summary statistics, what are the, some of the problems that you might see, and also um, some of the depths, uh, oh, sorry, some of the um, distributions to give you some very quick insights and also correlations as well. So it's done generalizing, now it's rendering quickly. Let's give it a few more seconds here. So now that um, the very first thing we see on here is a general overview of your entire data set. So if we've seen that we have 11 columns, also 11 variables, 10 of them being numerical, one of them is categorical, with a total of 331 rows that we're looking at. We already know that it's already detecting some missing values that we have. So we're already keeping that in mind. That's uh, the next step on the data processing that we are, are going to be going into. The next thing that you will see is some very more detailed um, analysis of your variables here. So the very first thing that pops up is distribution of each of your numerical variables. So if you already know about your local geology, you might already be able to get some initial insights um, just looking at the distribution of gamma ray. So if a gamma ray around 60, um, is that clean, is that not clean? Um, 
you can already be able to get some very quick idea of um, what uh, the well that you're looking at and the formations there. And we're also able to see that the pen missing values that we're seeing um, from the overview is actually from the gamma ray here. So again, it's showing a missing um, status on here. So this type of um, summary analysis, you're going to see that for all of the numerical variables. So, so I'm just looking through them, making sure that everything seems to be fine, high correlations, um, but I do expect this high correlations with the velocity and the Poisson ratio, so that's okay. Just looking through it. But then like the density pops up to me because I see that there are zeros values in here and zero values that does not make sense in um, our data sets here. So that might have been coming from some sensor error or the uh, instrument error uh, at those points. So that's also another thing that I'm keeping in mind. Uh, we also have an entire column that is crossed out for us because it's only detecting a single value um, inside this entire column being negative 999.25 uh, for neutron porosity. A negative value doesn't make sense, a constant value also doesn't make sense. So this is probably a um, variable that is not collected. Um, the instrument is actually not collected by the tool um, that we're looking at. Uh, negative 99.25 is likely some default values um, for no values. So we know that this is a column that we cannot use for our analysis. Looking through more of it, um, I see that depth in here is also another thing that pops up to me. Um, because considering this is uh, drill log data, we expect that the depth to be increasing incrementally. Um, so in our case here, we see a lot of depths around the 2000 range, but we do see uh, a few depths here at the 6000. So that's suggesting to me another probably instrument error. Um, but now because of this error, it's causing an outlier in our data set that we're going to have to deal with. So just quickly look, glancing through each of the variables here, now I already have a very good idea of what are the next steps that I have to take on this data set here. The next thing that you're going to see in the profile here is actually showing some of um, the relationship between your variables. So specifically, if I look click through these different variables here, I see that I have a positive relationship between gamma and resistivity, which is as expected. So um, this is giving me an idea, is there any abnormality that I'm seeing with my reservoir, or is there anything that is out of surprise? Um, another way that you can look at relationship is through the correlation plot here. Uh, so in this case, I'm looking at density porosity, I see a negative relationship with resistivity, makes sense. I uh, see a positive uh, correlation with um, sonic, so that's also good. So, so just like being able to see these correlations very quickly, you're already able to do some very quick validations on your data set. If things make sense, if things are as expected, or if there's any abnormalities. This next part is just another way to show missing data. Um, it's actually showing what we already know. So then the gamma ray, we know that there's 10 values that are missing on here. And then just a very quick sample of the first few rows and the last few rows of the data. So with this entire um, report, you were actually just getting that out of two lines of code from this pandas profiling package on here. So it's two lines and you're able to get all of these insights from it already. So now that we already know uh, what are the steps that is going to be needed in taking, we can go ahead and start cleaning. So this data processing, we're going to go through it very quickly. Um, we first impute our data on here. There's a lot of different steps in which you can do to impute data or deal with outliers. Um, you can look through more of it on the details on here that we've written. Again, this notebook will be shared, um, but in this case, we're just using a nearest neighbor imputation to impute our gamma rays. We're going to deal with our density analysis on here as well. Um, because we know that we have some zero values, we're doing a forward feeding because we know that it's only five meters down the well. Um, in geological sense, it wouldn't change too much. So it makes sense to just forward field it from the last um, valid value that we have to generate a more proper distribution of our density. And also for the depths in here for dealing with the outlier, because we know that it has to be in between those two points um, on our depths here, we can just do a very quick interpolation. So the, the whole purpose of our notebooks here is to just give a guideline or to walk you through what are the common steps that you need to take 
when you approach a data or you approach a problem. So you look at the data, you explore the data, and then you have an idea of what are the processing you need to take. So with um, so now the processing is in there, we cleaned up the data and your data is all ready to go. We will be able to do our analysis. Just looking at my data, looking through it. Uh, for the machine learning part in here, we're going to use a non-supervised machine learning for k-means clustering. Uh, we will go into more machine learning uh, tips and also um, walkthroughs in our upcoming sections. But in this case, um, just a quick general rule of thumb, we're choosing a number of cluster here where it's at the tangent point uh, with our inertia. So we're going to choose three clusters. Anything more than that is a common problem called um, overfitting which we don't want to occur in machine learning. So just doing some quick analysis. Now, this actually with just three cells, I've already finished my machine learning analysis. So I've already clustered all of my data points into three clusters. And with each of those clusters, we'll identify a certain rock layer uh, or type that we're looking at. And with some uh, quick visualization tools on here, now we are able to plot it out and see what are the actual layers that I'm looking at um, with a lot of data. Now this previously, this was a very manual process in which the engineers will come in and look into the different patterns to identify where are the layers and what are the layers. But with machine learning, we've automated a lot of that. Uh, and so with this quick notebook here, uh, if you just put in your data set, uh, you do some proper cleaning and you will be able to generate your insights as well. So this brings us to uh, our conclusions uh, on here. And so just a quick look, uh, we do have our community page for the digital hub on here. Uh, so again, our notebook will be shared on the community forum here and also we will see it in the chat uh, in the seminar right now. And so with this, uh, thank you everyone for uh, coming. I hope you enjoyed look through the demo and that gives us some insights. We'll also be happy to answer any questions on the community forum. So with that, I'll hand it back to you, Babak. Um, and thanks everyone for joining today. Uh, we're trying to keep these very short, uh, be cognizant of your time, but definitely there is a lot of depth, uh, in-depth uh, conversation that we can have on the community. So I encourage everyone to join or even uh, just message us here or on the community. There will be other future sessions and I look forward to see everybody there. Thank you.